Do we really need another video about AI generating music? No? Well, how about I'm gonna make one? Anyways... <laughs> yeah, I know, you already seen all these videos talking about ChatGPT making music. And the results are, well, mixed. Sometimes you get some really unexpected results, especially when it comes to lyrics. But chord progressions and melodies? Mm, not so much. And of course, part of the reason for that is that ChatGPT, who I would have thought, is made for chatting. So all it can do is write down the names of the chords within a chord progression, or it delivers you these weird guitar taps. So in the end, the music it writes isn't just arguably repetitive, but also very distant from music itself. Because in the end, all you'll get is text. Which is not ideal, not even in the field of music notation itself. Just imagine your friend sending you a text instead of a Spotify link and you would go like, Ah oh, yes, this indeed is a banger. So screw that. I want to hear something. I want results that everyone can do at home. And because of this, dear people of the internet, I will show you a different set of AI tools with which you can not only generate actual audio, but also a notation that is useful. Sheet music, MIDI, music XML, you name it. So here's what we do. We'll take ChatGPT and we will kindly... And then we will take Jukebox AI and Klangio and we'll make like a little... So here's what we're gonna do. We will take a short piece of music and use it as a primer for Jukebox AI, which will generate new music, which are then analyzed and transcribed by the Klangio applications. And make sure to stick to the end, because I will show you some extra steps on how to get even more out of the stuff that we're generating today. And also subscribe, because it's free. All right, let's get to it. Step one, Jukebox AI. For the first step, we will need a Google account and a WAV file, which we will use as a primer. I would recommend to use a piano or an acoustic guitar because a singled out instrument gives us the best results in transcribing that later. We're just not able to transcribe a whole band with AI yet. So I found this beautiful piano piece of the Attack on Titan opening by Patrick Pietschmann. Link is in the description if you want to check that out. And all I did is trim it down to the first 10 seconds. So I will go into my Google Drive and create a new folder. And I'm just gonna call it AI Music. Here we are. So now I will simply drag and drop that into my drive. And once it's uploaded, you can open up the Jukebox collab book, which is the first link that I've put into the description below. Also a huge shout out to the Jukebox AI community who created this collab book. A link to their Discord server is in the description as well. Now, don't worry if this looks intimidating to you. You don't have to code anything whatsoever. I will lead you through the steps that I figured out work best for this use case. First, we click on this first execution button here and accept all the dialogues. And all that did is assigning us a GPU, which we will use to generate our music. If we get a Tesla T4, we're fine. But if you got something different, which never happened to me so far, you might need to choose a different model depending on the GPU you get. Next up, we will delete the lyrics. And we will also execute this cell. Now to change some parameters. First off, we will change the model to B5 because we do not want any lyrics. HPS.n underscore samples will stay at two. This will define how many versions we will generate. And I think two is just fine. HPS.name. Here we enter our folder we just created in our drive. Mine is called AI Music. So I'm going in here and type AI music music here we go speed up sampling yes mode we will also leave at primed which means it will take the piece of audio that we provide as a starting point in contrast ancestral will use no audio and generate music from scratch but in my experience it's a gamble because <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I don't understand what's going on. Next is our audio file, which we just uploaded. And mine is called AOT Piano, which means I will just copy my path in here, go slash, and instead of your file, I will type AOT Piano. Right, prompt length in seconds is how long your prompt is gonna be. And mine's just 10 seconds long anyways. If your audio is shorter than 10 seconds, you should lower it to that point. And if it's longer, you can just leave it at 10, which means it will only take the first 10 seconds of it. Sample length in seconds, it will generate 70 seconds of audio for us. Artist and genre, I tend to leave that blank because from my experience, it tends to stay at that one singled out instrument that I've provided. Sampling temperature, we'll keep that at 0.98. It's basically how creative or chaotic the generation is gonna be. And disconnect runtime after finish, we can leave that checked as well. So now all we are left to do is click on execute and allow it to access our Google Drive. And now we wait. And this process takes about two hours and 50 minutes. And of course, that is the biggest downside to this tool set. So what happens? Why does it take so long? Now, I won't give you a lecture on how Jukebox exactly works, but it's well documented already. Link is in the description. So the oversimplified answer would be Jukebox works entirely with audio and the parameters that we give to it. it means it takes much more processing and thus time uh, to generate audio because the data is much more complex than text. And since Jukebox doesn't know, or rather it doesn't pretend to know, what a major, a minor, a seventh chord or music theory in general is, but instead works directly with the raw data, which can later be played back through your headphones into your ears. Trust me, it's worth the wait generating music this way because the results are much more interesting, in my opinion at least. If you're smart, there are ways to get more results in a short amount of time. Of course, it's most effective to lower the parameters like the sample length in seconds and how many samples it's going to create. But I actually prefer to do this. I have plenty of Google accounts for some reason. So when I generate something, I always open up two or three tabs with different Google accounts so I can run multiple generations in parallel. You don't save time with this, but you get more results in the same amount. And once we're done, your folder will look something like this. You will have three more folders in there, which are called level zero, level one, and level two. Level zero will contain the highest quality of the samples we've generated. And in here you have item zero and item one. And these are the two different versions of the music we've just generated. So let's listen to some of my personal favorites that I've generated so far. So the results of these, even though the audio quality is very low, 
completely blew my mind to be honest and of course you'll have to do some cherry picking but this is why we run multiple generations in parallel and if you're bothered by the quality too much make sure to stick to the end because i will show you a way on how to improve the quality of the generations containing only a single instrument now that we have our piece of inspiring music, we can chop it, remix it, maybe sample it or leave it as it is, but let's stay on track. We are most interested in singled out instruments. So let's take the last example I just showed you and move on to step number two. Now click the second link in the description, which will lead you to the Klangio website, which also uses AI technology not to generate music, but instead to transcribe it into a musical notation. Down here, we have access to guitar to taps, which is for playing guitar, sing to notes for singing and piano to notes, you probably already guessed it, which are all available not just for web, but also on iOS and Android. So if you want to transcribe any music, your own recordings, for example, check out the applications. No logger needed and anything under 30 seconds is free to transcribe. Since we've just generated a piece for the piano, we're going on piano to notes. And down here we can either enter a YouTube link or drop our file in here, which is what we're gonna do by downloading it and simply drag and drop it into here. Now all that's left is entering a title. We're going to accept the terms and conditions and we're gonna click on continue. And you can leave the additional information just as it is. And now we wait again. Just kidding. It only takes a couple seconds. Since even though we're working with audio as an input, the output is symbolized music in form of music notation. And here we are. Instead of just getting the name of the chords like with ChatGPT, we get full sheet music, which we can play back. <laughs> and also download the sheet music as a PDF file. And here we are. At this point, we've already surpassed what ChatGPT can do, but can we take it further? Audio quality isn't great. <laughs> in fact, it sounds more like 2008 me in middle school playing gorillas on full volume on my Sony Ericsson at the bus stop. Yeah, I was that kid. Also, I can't read sheet music fluently. I know. I know, I'm ashamed, I'm sorry, but please don't tell my coworkers. But what I am good at is working with MIDI. And with the premium model of the Klangio apps, you can actually download MIDI and Music XML. So let's see where this takes us. Since I'm happy with how the transcription was going so far, I'm going to log into my account and do a full transcription of the song. So now I have a transcription of the full 70 seconds, which I can then download as a MIDI file. So the basic idea is now to scrap the audio that we've generated so far and instead only use the MIDI to proceed, which is basically an instruction for what was played and then create entirely new audio from that. So what I'm gonna do now is open up Reaper, which is a DAW of my choice. DAW stands for DAMN. AI wizardry. <laughs> Just a program to work with audio. Music you will listen to on a daily basis is mostly produced with this kind of software. So now what we're gonna do is we will drag and drop our MIDI file into here. Now if we press play, nothing happens. As I've just mentioned, those are just instructions, they're not actual sound. But now if we add a digital piano which executes these instructions, it will sound something like this. Actually, let's increase the tempo on that. Now this sounds much cleaner, but still a little robot-ish. So what we're gonna do is we will humanize these instructions. So we're going in here, which are all of our MIDI notes, just randomizing how hard the keys are played. It will sound something like... Now I really like that part. I think 
got a nice melody going on there. So now I will focus on that and do a little bit of manual tweaking to make it sound a little more to my likings. So I feel like the right hand should only tap these notes. So let's see how that sounds like. Yeah, I like it. And also let's do some more manual editing on the velocity or on how hard the keys are pressed. So we'll add a curve so it gets from low to high from low to high again, and then long from low to high. So now it sounds like this. Nice. But let's also add some reverb to make it sound bigger. Hey there, thanks for sticking to the end. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, subscribe and leave a like. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Hope to see you soon. Bye.